Hey everybody and welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm John Overstreet and today's do-it-yourself project is one that I know you're really gonna like. You ever notice when you go to buy spinners for an aircraft, there's always a limited number of profiles that are available. Today I'm gonna show you how to build custom profile spinners using common materials and simple tools. These only take about 10 to 15 minutes to make and they are very, very easy. What do you say we go get started? Before we get started, let's talk about the tools and the materials we're gonna be using to make spinners. Make sure that you have some safety glasses. We're gonna be using power tools and we're also going to be mounting the spinner to a motor as we add shape. These are a must when doing this project. You can see here I've got just a couple basic clamps. I'm going to be using a cordless drill with a 3 inch hole saw. For the project you're doing, you may need a different size. You can see here that I've got a hole saw set with multiple sizes. I got this off of Amazon for $17. These sets are available from hardware stores or other places online. They're real easy to come by. Here I've got some 8 inch plywood. I got this at a local hobby store. You can go slightly thinner, but I wouldn't go much thinner. Underneath here, I've just got a piece of scrap wood. Here, I've got a simple paint stirrer. I've taken a piece of 36 grit sandpaper and hot glued it to the paint stick. You're gonna need some Gorilla Tape. I like the Gorilla Tape compared to the packing tape. It is much, much stronger. The foam we're going to be using, I picked up at a local hobby store. It's a real brittle foam. You can see how it breaks away. This is the same foam that's used for shipping stuff like coffee makers, microwaves, and TVs. It's real easy to come by. I'm going to be cutting the foam using a hot wire. A hot wire isn't critical, but it does make the job a little bit easier. If you don't have a hot wire, just get a large serrated kitchen knife. That pretty well covers all the tools we're gonna to be using. There are gonna be a couple minor things that we use along the way. We'll cover those later on in the video. What do you say we get started? Let's start by cutting a pair of back plates for the spinners using our three inch hole saw. When drilling, make sure you keep a very firm grip on your driver. You don't want it to get away and twist your wrist. Okay, there's one. Use my pocket knife to pop that disc out. Okay, let's cut one more. go. Once that's out, you can use a file and remove some of the splintering around the edges. You can also use sandpaper. That works just as well. Once you've got both back plates cleaned up, let's go to the next step. Next, we need to cut our foam down to size. This is a three inch wooden disc. And so you can see where I've got my wire at about three and an eighth inches, so it's a little bit wider than the disc itself. I want to make a cube that's about three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. In order to get a perfect cube, you're going to have to run the block through the hot wire three times. Ok, 
Okay, now I'm going to make a second one. All right, now we've got a couple cubes, and you can see that they're slightly larger than the diameter of the discs. Again, if you don't have a hot wire, just use a kitchen knife or something. Just be really careful. If it's a little bit lopsided, that is not a problem. Once you get your blocks cut, let's move on to the next step. Now we need to install the back plate onto the motor. If you look closely, you'll notice that I've got a pair of prop spacers in between the back plate and the prop nut. Once you've got this set up, go ahead and cinch down the nut like you're installing the propeller. Once you've cinched down the prop nut and everything is tight and secure, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to place it on its edge across the corners diagonally. I'm going to press straight down and create a line. Once I do that, I'm going to turn my block and do the same thing. That gives me a perfect center point. I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. Okay, once I do that, I'm going to dig a hole right here in the center using a knife. This hole is going to create a relief because we're going to glue this block to this back plate. When I line up the block to the back plate, I want to make sure that I've got pretty good alignment left and right, up and down. I want it as centered as possible. Yeah, it looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a heavy bead of glue in a circle around this hole in the middle of the block. And I'm going to glue the block onto the back plate. I'm going to spin it a couple times as it's cooling to make sure that my block is pretty well centered. I'm going to hold this in place for about a minute and a half while the glue cools down. Once the glue cools, we're going to start turning the spinner. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to secure the aircraft to the tabletop. You'll notice that my motor is hanging off the edge of the table. Since the aircraft's been painted, I've put a couple pieces of foam on top of the wing. This is where I'm going to run my Gorilla Tape. There you go. I want to make sure that that's good and stuck. Okay, that ought to hold things in place. I've got my wires hanging out of the bottom of the aircraft. We're going to need to power this up here in just a couple minutes. I've added an extra long extension. I'm going to be powering up the motors and controlling the throttle using a servo tester. For this step, be sure and wear your safety glasses. I'm going to go ahead and plug the battery in. And I'm going to plug in this motor to my servo tester. Once the battery and the servo tester have been plugged in, using the round side of a screwdriver, I'm going to apply light pressure right at the center of that X we created with the ruler. Once my screwdriver is in place, I'm going to introduce a little bit of power. Yeah. 
what I'm checking for is I'm going to make sure that this block isn't shaking too much. This looks really good. Next, locate your paint stirrer with the sandpaper glued in place. What we're going to do is we're going to start the motor turning again and holding the stick like this, we're going to start removing material. I'm not putting much downward pressure on the block at all. In fact, just the weight of the paint stick by itself will be enough to knock the corners off. We're just going to remove a little material and then shut things down and take a look at it. One thing I want to mention before I do this is my power is at about 20 to 25 percent. It doesn't need to be spinning really fast in order to add shape. Okay, you can see at this point, the only thing we've accomplished is we've knocked the corners down. So that's looking really good. Let's do it again and just remove a little bit more material. you can see that we're making some progress. We're going to repeat this step two or three more times until all the flats are gone. I'm going to turn the speed up just a little bit on this next pass. You'll notice on that step that I was able to pull my screwdriver away. As the shape gets trued up, it'll balance out and you won't need the screwdriver any longer. We're making some progress. Of course, we're making a huge mess too. That's just part of it. Looks like we've almost got the flats removed. I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to go show you how to get the desired shape. 
The Mosquito has a very rounded spinner, so I've cut out a template and I'm going to show you how to use the template so you get the shape that you're looking for for the build you're doing. I'm going to place a screwdriver here when this starts up. Very, very, very light pressure. We've removed all the flats. Now it's time to add the actual shape. Now that I've got the shape roughed in, I've cut a profile piece and this is the profile I'm wanting to create. So if I hold my profile up against a spinner, you'll notice that I need to remove material here. This next process is a little bit time consuming because we're just going to remove a little bit of material until we have this shape. I'll probably start and stop four or five times in order to get the profile I'm looking for. So I'm going to start first off by just removing material right here on the nose. I want to shorten this spinner up quite a bit. Okay, let's check our progress. All right, we took a little bit off. Uh, let's do it again. A couple things to remember. I always start with my screwdriver up front. I don't think anything's popped loose, but this just kind of keeps everything in place. I always like to have that there when I start. And also, I am still not applying very much pressure as materials being removed. It's just a little bit more than the weight of the paint stirrer. see what we got. Alright, that isn't looking too bad. This actually went a little bit faster than what I expected. Now you'll notice that I still have a little bit of excess material here in the front. I'm actually wanting to leave that for the time being. My shape is close, so the next thing I want to do is I want to break this spinner off just like it is, and then we're going to install the prop then we're going to reinstall the spinner and then we're going to add that final shape. Let's first start off by unplugging the battery. Once we do that, we're going to run a razor blade all the way around the perimeter where the spinner meets the back plate. Removing the spinner is pretty easy. We're going to go around the spinner where it meets a back plate three or four times. This will cut through the hot glue that we added earlier.
All right, now that I've got the spinner broken loose, I'm going to remove the remaining material from the face of the back plate. All right, now that that's done, we're going to break the prop nut loose and install the prop. You can see that I've got the prop installed. I have removed the two prop spacers. I've double checked to make sure that my prop is turning the correct direction. Next, I'm going to eyeball my spinner from the top. I'm going to rotate the prop and look at it from the top again. I want to make sure that my spinner is centered against this back plate. Once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to slide my fingers behind the back plate slightly for support, and I'm going to press the spinner into the prop. What that's going to do is that's going to give me a line here and a line right here. It's really faint. Once I have that line, I'm going to cut straight down. I'm going to go in between three-eighths of an inch and a half of an inch. And I'm going to go all the way to the center where we've cut that relief. Once I've done that, I'm now going to come in at about a 45 degree angle and we're going to cut away a relief so that the prop will fit in there nicely. I'm going to flip it around and do the same on the other side. You'll see that there's still a space between my spinner and my back plate. I just need to continue to remove material until the spinner lays flush against the back plate. It looks like with very minor pressure my gap is closed up. Now we're going to apply glue to the back plate here and here. And we're going to apply a pretty heavy bead of glue. And once we do that, we're going to center the spinner in place, checking it from all sides, and we're going to hold it in place while the glue cools down. Before the glue cools down, I'm making sure that the spinner is centered as close as I can get it. And hold everything in place for a full two minutes. That'll give the glue plenty of time to cool down. I want to add a little bit more glue where the spinner meets the back plate right along this seam. It's not going to be a really heavy bead of glue, but I see a little bit of a crack and I want to fill that. let that cool down. Now we're going to do final shaping and this is the part you got to be very very careful on. I want to make sure when I am adding shape that I am not standing right here in line with the blade. I'm going to actually move all the way over here. You've got a paint stir with a long handle and we're going to take advantage of that. So I'm going to be standing way over here. You can see that I've got an extension added to my servo tester. Of course, this can also be done using your transmitter, but if you're going to be using a servo tester like I'm doing, be sure and add a long extension so you can stay clear of the blade. 
I'm going to plug my battery in. And I'm going to apply very light pressure here on the tip. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a little bit of power to the motor. And I want to make sure that the spinner isn't terribly out of balance. So I'm just going to turn it on and turn it back off. Okay, that isn't bad. Now, I want to check my profile once again. So each time that I check the spinner against the profile, I am going to disconnect the battery. I want to make sure that I am nowhere near this propeller with the battery plugged in. Okay, so looks like all I need to do is take off a little over a quarter of an inch here in the front. My shape is really close. I'm going to plug my battery in. Again, I'm going to be standing in front of the propeller. I want to make sure I'm not in line with the prop. I've got my paint stirrer. I'm going to introduce a little bit of power. One thing to be careful of is as you're adding shape, you don't want the paint stick to get in line with the spinning prop. I'm going to disconnect my battery and let's check my profile. That is very close. I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to do the other side now. All right, I'm looking at both of them together. They look really close. Let's get this thing dusted off and see how it looks. We're out here in the field getting ready to send this up in the air. Anytime you put a spinner on an aircraft, you're gonna notice a little bit of change in flight performance, and these are no exception. You may have a little bit different motor pitch, and your top speeds will be reduced just slightly. All right, winds are, uh, the winds seem to have died down. Let's send this thing up. So now that the aircraft's been trimmed out, I've got Jesse just doing lazy passes. You can tell by the pitch of the motor that we really got these balanced out pretty good. If one or both of your motors are making excessive noise, you can always go back and remove a little bit more material to balance them out a little bit better. It looks like the top speed hasn't been affected very much either. I really like the way this model has turned out. There are definitely some pros and cons to making your own spinners. The biggest downside is that if you happen to break a prop, you're going to have to cut the spinner off, replace the prop, reinstall the spinner, and do a little bit of sanding to get it tuned again. One other drawback is that this type of foam is difficult to paint. Uh, if you try to hit it with spray paint or something like that, it's just going to melt. There might be some acrylics that you can use if you're just wanting to add some color. Like I mentioned earlier, the biggest benefits to this type of spinner is they're cheap to make, they're easy to make, and you can customize the profile any way you like. I'm really happy with the way these things are performing. Let's get this thing on the ground and head back inside. 
Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Hopefully you found the information to be useful. If there's something that you would like to see covered on the Flight Test Tech channel, be sure and indicate in the comments section below. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the Flight Test Tech channel, consider hitting that subscription button down below. That's all I got for today. We'll see you next time.